being personally self-aware of the value that you bring to societal progress is the first key to advancing both your confidence and your ability to impact, inspire, and endure. For you see, personal development starts with the belief that you have the intrinsic motivation and ability to capitalize on the passion and purpose that you've set out for in your own life. Setting your own standard of expectations and rising to the level of acceptance is a definition and description that differs for all of us. Because you see, painting a portrait of success means that you're running towards a goal and that your vision in order to obtain it is undeterred. But the only person that can make such a commitment to you is yourself. Outside motivation is helpful. However, the internal fire that burns within you will always outlast and out-extinguish the external resources that you may collect along the way. Philip James is an authentic fitness professional who helps men transform their lives and helps them level up to the person they desire to be, helping them to cultivate their own level of personal commitment, pride, and satisfaction. He is a strong believer as a transformational fitness coach that we're the authors of our own stories, and it's upon all of us to live the greatest life that we intend for our aspirations. Now, for all of us, this is different, but for James, he's on a mission to change the way we look at leadership, our bodies, and our mindsets. He started his career as a hairstylist in both California and New York. He worked with some top celebrities and fashion moguls to everyone in between, and he found that everyone was looking for external motivation without doing the internal work necessary in order to thrive. And now, he helps men do the same, looking for their intrinsic internal motivation in order for them to maximize every aspect of their lives. And James, join me this week to tell me more. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. friend it's great to see you again and I can't wait to hear all about your life journey and fitness life and business my friend great to see you and happy Thursday to you happy Thursday bro let's rock and roll absolutely my friend and I and I know my friend that you believe that we're the authors of our own stories and you have a certain philosophy on how we should all live lives. So I'm wondering if you can share that with me this afternoon. Yeah, my philosophy is a little different than most people. I think that at our core, we're creators. And by creating, we lift our spirits. We're able to share our gift with the world and connect on a deeper level. And I've, I've experienced that through my life, through my personal journey. Anytime I'm consuming anything excessively, I'm left with an empty feeling, whether that be clothes, anything materialistic, if I'm diving into it in, in too too much of a depth, 
I leave with the feeling of like uh, emptiness is the best way I can describe it. So creating and giving your gift to the world, whatever that looks like, your uh, your zone of genius is something that we all need. And anytime that I'm feeling down or feeling like uh, pessimistic and I do a good deed for somebody, it completely lifts my spirits and changes my whole paradigm for the day. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, Philip, I gave a, a presentation to um, college students yesterday about the importance of igniting your own flame of difference and really leading into what makes you different as individuals, because it's my belief that uh, a diversity of perspective is a strength, isn't it? I totally, I couldn't agree more with that. That's a, that's a bold statement. And I see it, I see it very, very much the same way you do. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, Philip, what does that mean to ignite a fire of difference in your view? What do you think that means to you? Differences is a good thing. I don't think that everybody should have the same viewpoint. Um, sparks conversation. Anytime you meet someone that has a difference of opinion, at least for me, I like to engage as much as I can and, and practice uh, rigorous discord, actually like engage with somebody and work on my skills of critical thinking. Because anytime someone brings something from the other aspect, from the other realm, it gets you to think on a different level and it actually grows both people at the same time. That's why I like um, I like debate. I think debate's a really, really great task and a great skill for kids to learn early on. For me, I wasn't the greatest growing up on this. I had an opinion and a viewpoint on the world and how things should operate, but it wasn't until I got into high school and even college where I'm like, you know, people have a very, very different viewpoint based off of their upbringings and their experiences in life. So I think we could become a well-rounded individual if we get to listen to more people and have conversations like you and I are having. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I Philip, I'm a big believer in discovering your passion and your purpose and a lot of that sort of being your indicator of uh, developing an identity. So talk to me about the importance of developing a passion and a purpose and how uh, big and important you think that is. I think it's huge because it feeds our soul. Anything that is worthwhile is going to take a bold move on your part. If we have the opportunity to tap into our consciousness, our true north, by eliminating aspects that don't serve us, we're able to find that passion more and more clearly. I had somebody early on in my life that kind of painted this picture and gave me a spectrum of possibilities through questions. And that was somebody that was close to me growing up, my grandmother spent five days a week with me. And that was that was a point in my life where I really got to tap into passions because she invited me to try different things. Um, people that I've met across, you know, my journey growing up, I think that people are stuck in a box and they try to fit themselves in a box because that's what society shows. And, and we're just so much bigger than that. I think Kobe Bryant has said it best. It's like you are you're able to be multifaceted. And once we put ourselves in a box, we cap ourselves from our true development and our true growth. So I think that passion is an, is an endless energy supply. And if you can find something that you tap into with love and abundance, that right there is going to be a driving force to, to keep you going for life. Yeah, absolutely. And Philip, one of your sort of rallying cries or mottos in life is, Vision without action is a daydream, and action without vision is a nightmare, my friend. So let's dive into the importance of uh, uh, constantly taking consistent action and how that relates to our vision in life, my friend, and what does that mean to you? So this one's really cool. I, I, I posted this because that was a period of change, and people that I'm kind of working with on a on a day-to-day -day basis tend to fall into the category of being stuck. A lot of people will envision and daydream and think about the possibilities because we've been, a lot, of the, a lot of the topics on hand are wishful thinking. Um, we, we like to look into periods of uh, what is possible in life, but how do we put an action plan behind that? 
if we're stuck in that daydream, we're going to be in that perpetual cycle of just thinking about something and wishing for something more than we're willing to work for it, which doesn't get us very far. It becomes this this dream that's so far out there that you will never obtain because you don't have the action steps necessary in order to go after it. Yeah, absolutely. And fellas, let's take a minute to talk about mental and emotional intelligence because I think as guys sometimes, Philip, men are afraid to be vulnerable. But I, I, I truly believe that emotion and vulnerability can really lead to having a superpower in life. So tell me about the importance of mental and emotional intelligence and why vulnerability can be a strength for uh, men specifically. Men specifically have been taught a lie from the beginning of birth. It's like our, our upbringing is all about capping emotion and holding that in. But emotion is our true power in, in any endeavor. I think if we're able to feel ourselves, we're able to understand emotion and be an observer of it rather than let that actually take our take ourselves in control of, um, you know, of possible action. If we are if we're men that want to make a, a significant change, we ought to come together and share a conversation amongst each other because we're all the same. We all have the same fears, the same uh, the same challenges, and we don't share that often enough. But in a men's group or in a men's circle, we can be more vulnerable with each other. And I think that might be the first step for people on a growth journey. Um, that being being a man, you know, holding the door open for women, um, not being a womanizer, all these things that are not shown on TV and not shown in movies is something that we can all learn from and not do. I think as modern men, we should be both emotional and intelligent at the same time. And that takes constant practice and constant work through meditation and other modalities that you can you can figure that out for yourself. Yeah. And, and Philip, I know that uh, one of uh, one of the rallying cries you live by is that the, the proof is in the progress, my friend. And I'm uh, someone that always believes in the model of moving forward in life. You know, adversity is going to strive for all of us. But, you know, if we make sure and make a conscious effort to make sure that our vision uh, for our life isn't clouded by distractions, I, I, I think we can grow as people. So tell me about the proof being in the progress and what that means to you, my friend. How many times have you set out for a goal and once you hit that goal you realize that that's not where it ends how many times have we all gone to a point where we're like that's where we thought we would be happy but we're not truly happy so removing the bar and being able to live in a live in a state of progress actually will trump somebody trying to hit these goals every single week or yearly i think progress is something that can be easily obtained and St someone can stay consistent on progress versus goal oriented. And I think by saying the proof is in the progress, you see constant results that are going to be able to keep you uh, motivated and in line with your vision. Progress for me might be some, you know, something different or different than someone else. But at the end of the day, progress for everybody is growth. And I think that's kind of what we're all seeking. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, Philip, as I, I shared with you during our first meeting, buddy, I was um, born with a cerebral palsy, and I found out at the age of nine, my friend, that I wouldn't uh, be able to walk for the duration of my life because of the severity of my disability. But I always believed that, uh, you know, there, there are two uh, uh, fundamental sayings that I live my life by. And the first is that, Inclusion is the gateway to independence. And the second one is that everyone's portrait of success is different. So when you look or examine the word inclusion or acceptance of others, I'm curious, what comes to mind uh, for you? Um, openness. I think, I think that inclusion is something that will give us an opportunity to dive into you know something might be uncomfortable or something that might be 
not in your wheelhouse, but including an inclusion of that might be something that can push you for forward in an area that you're not comfortable in, but again, will will shape your your destiny and give you that period of opportunity to learn from. And I think it's all I think everything is internal. Everything, everything is internally based. Yeah, absolutely. And my friend, I want to talk to you about the the uh, prospect of you know persevering through challenges and how uh, challenging ourselves to really elevate our own st standards is the key uh, to advancing in life. Because you know, I I also believe that when we talk about expectations, Philip, that uh, the only level of expectations that we have to meet our, our own, and I, you know, I know that we share the same sort of synergy in that regard. So talk to me about persevering through challenges and setting your own standard of expectations and what that means to you. Yeah, for sure. I'm somebody, so a little background on me. I grew up in sports. I played baseball 15 years of my life. I'm a martial artist. I love jujitsu. It's a practice of mine. Also being a uh, fitness enthusiast. So working out has always been a modality of challenge and, you know, uh, something that you need to put effort into. And at the end of the day, considering what's going on in the world, where we are, most of us live to are living a, a very comfortable life. Like, let's not get it twisted. So putting yourself in adversity daily will cause a growth factor by our, by us being able to dive into uh postmates and other aspects of things that might be an easy instant grab it's the low-hanging fruit and will never never push you into uh the next phase of your 10.0 version of yourself so for me diving into uh weight cutting or games or practices that i wasn't always necessarily wanting to do i always grabbed satisfaction from building my character daily and that character has led me in a direction where i can now hit different areas of life head on and very strong confidence comes from following through with your word and if we don't follow through with our word enough on the commitments that we make we can't live a true a truly tr a strong individual and we will never be able to grab those other pieces that we're looking to get after because we don't have the we don't have that inner strength so i think adversity is the, our best friend and criticism is also our best friend yeah yeah absolutely it's all all about that self-motivation isn't it? it it can be it's not something that comes easy that's for sure i think i think that by by nature we like we're creatures of comfort so we get used to certain aspects, but when it's dark and and for me, my morning process gets me to an elevated state to where I'm able to operate out of love and not being reactive, but also but being in a responsive state. So for me, waking up at four in the morning, that's not something that I want to do, but I put myself in that situation to elevate my internal state and then in turn being able to uh, win my day and help you know, and help the energy flow of, of the people I come across because all that's earned. Everything, everything that we feel on a day-to-day -day basis is earned and people want things, but they're not willing to work for it. If you work for it, you actually get to, you get to savor that moment and savor that flavor so much more. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Philip, I'm a, a true believer in the theory that uh, we make time for the things in life that we prioritize and I, I know that we both uh, share the same sort of synergy in the fact that personal growth is one of the keys uh, to advancement my friend so when we look at the concept of personal growth and taking ownership of your own life I'm wondering your thoughts on the importance of personal growth and, and how we can, can execute a vision for that game plan as well I think I think that's something very, very easy, but also not very easy to do. And what I mean by that is writing down our goals, like writing down our vision, writing down these things that we're all after on different levels. Um, speaking it out to an exist in existence is important. Speaking that and sharing that with yourself is very important. Um, 
I think that you there's only two ways of seeing the world. It's either glass half empty or glass half full. So it's it's choice. How do you want to see the world? How would you where do you want to put yourself? If you see this, if you see the world half empty, you're going to see everything half empty. And opportunities are going to pass you by. And I've just chosen to li live in the world of opportunity glass half full and things have just you know blossomed and it's not all it's not all candy canes and rainbows let's not get it twisted however if you do work on your personal development i think that that's your key the key to your success the key to a lot of our success is personal development yeah absolutely and you know my friend uh, when you turn on the news today or look at societal uh discourse you would be hard pressed not to think that we are sort of a divided, sort of in a divided state. And one of the reasons, as I shared with you in our initial conversation, I wanted to start this podcast is I wanted to develop a platform where we could talk about healing divisions and having conversations that move the needle of progress forward. So when you look at the world today, Philip, I'm, I'm curious to ask you, how do you think we heal divisions and uh, create more bridges of unity? Uh, great question, bro. That, for me, would be love at the end of the day, unconditional love. We're taught and shown that it's we are divided but by but by what well, by what means so we're somebody that gay versus straight women versus men at the end of the day we need each other we're very very similar we're more similar than we are different and i think that we haven't had the opportunity and this level this level of intelligence and awareness is growing i see it through the conversations that i'm having but accepting and hearing somebody out, dropping ego, I think our ego serves us well, but healthy egoism can give us an opportunity to uh, heal ourselves and then heal everyone that we come in, co in contact with. I think it all stems from within. We're the kings of ourselves, first and foremost. So by that very nature, um, you know, focus on you. And I think everything else will fall in place. But we're so focused on changing the next person, changing our siblings or our family. It's like you got to focus on you. And once you start diving in and, and getting a grasp on that, it's funny how everything kind of flattens out and, and irons out itself. Yeah. And just following up on that quickly, Philip, I'm curious, when you look at the world today, I guess what what frustrates you the most? most to sort of put your best foot forward in, term, in terms of trying to fix it. So I guess when you look at the world today, what's the one division in the world that you're motivated to fit, fix every a morning when you get up? I'm just focused on being the best that I can be, the being the best that I'm able to, to be. I'm, I'm, I have an obsession with becoming the best me possible. And that right there is, again, my it, I'm waging war on that. I'm waging war on myself, focused on myself. And I think that's where everything starts. So I can't, I, I, I think religion is a big part of that. I think that that has an aspect of, um, it's, it's very, that's very, that's the theme of, of what's going on right now in the world. And it's very sad to see, and I'm heartbroken and all of that. Um, but at focus, I think focusing on yourself and figuring out who you truly are and, and not ideas and thoughts of somebody else, but your thoughts and opinions truly matter. So diving into that modality of acceptance and then, you know, giving yourself to, to the world. Yeah. And, and uh, since you sparked my interest with that answer, I'm, I'm going to ask you, do you think working on ourselves is the best way to sort of move the needle of societal progress forward? Because, you know, uh, as I said about expectations, it's hard to reach anybody else's artificial level of expectations of yourself if you don't, if you don't or, or that individual uh, foundation. So when you look at 
uh, uh, personal growth and getting better as people. Um, I'm curious, do you think working on ourselves is the best way to sort of move the needle of progress forward for the entire society? I I truly do. I, I personally do. That's that's I'm very, very strongly guided in that direction. Um it's it's funny how most of us will again regurgitate information that we hear but that's not necessarily who we are. And I made a post about this on my Instagram maybe a few few weeks ago. And we're given a name at birth, we're given a religion at birth and a, a, a race, but that's really not who we are. That's only a partial truth. And so living in wisdom, everything is internal. We can all find the answers within us. And I'm, I'm saying this because through practice and I, I've been able to find and tap into universal consciousness is that's what I believe. Um, that's the guiding factor on reality and truth moving forward with, with our society and community. So I, I definitely think that that is something if people focused on and double down on that their world would transform so much and they would be operating out of love that you, you see, you would see the blossom and the wildfire take, take on. Um, yeah. It's it's crazy because I was in a situation and position where I was I, I I've never always let me let me rephrase this I haven't always been that optimistic um, there is that nature inside of me but it wasn't until I got real with myself and started diving into truths and eliminating things that weren't fitting the family dynamic and the vision of just operating from like I'm not running from myself anymore. And I think that most people are not good at being themselves. So they're they're masking and pretending to be something different when when they're in their true reality, they are, you know, they can be a passionate person that can give off um, their love in a different way. I hope that makes sense. That's very complicated and it's very hard to condense into like a ball. Yeah, no, I'll uh, follow. Uh, uh, it actually works uh, good for my next question. So I'll follow okay. up with this uh, you know during our initial conversation we talked about um the social response responsibility of manhood and becoming a great father and how you defined elite fatherhood so i'm curious as a man and as a, a race as being man man i'm curious do you think men have a social responsibility to be leaders my viewpoint on that is absolutely um i believe that i'm the head of the household so how am i gonna how am i gonna provide a space for my wife to thrive in all areas in motherhood as a wife and i think once i control the uh, the react, my reactions and again, the emotions, and this is something that I learned growing up as well is emotions as we, we let that take over too much and too often as men, we let our emotions, uh, control us. And that's a very, that's very weak to me. So I have focused on getting better at that aspect of life. And that has served my family really, really well. So doing these things that can give you the opportunity at, providing a um, comfortable space of truth, love, honesty, integrity, and love. At the end of the day, we operate by the tenets of love. And that right there is something that we're blending the two energies. As, as a man, it's like the divine masculine is where I'm coming from. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Phil, Phil will ask you uh, directly, what do you think it means to be uh, an all-star dad. What do you think that means? Committing to your, committing to the family, um, not living selfishly, uh, addressing self is important, but also living in a very selfless manner where your attention is undivided with your family. If you have children, I think it's important to um, be a role model and be an example for your children, uh, not to tell them what to do, but show them how to live. And if you're practicing unhealthy habits, they're in turn going to pick 
pick up on that and take that with them later on. So I think consciousness, I think awareness is intelligence. And if you're aware, you're going to be able to be a strong father and an all-star dad. Yeah, and I'm wondering, did the thing, because uh, I also know that you're married to buddy. So I'm curious, do the same principles in your view apply to being a great husband? Same. I think those are all very, I think that parallels very, very, it, it parallels really well with each other. I think that if you're able to to operate as a again as a man, father, husband, you're you're going to be taken care of in all areas. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just one follow up on that. What what, what do you think it means to empower uh, your wife or your significant other in a, in a relationship? How do you create great relationships with the people? people that you're married to or the people in your life. So what do you think it means to create elite relationships? Truth and honesty, getting honest again, it goes all back to yourself, honest with yourself. So therefore you can be truthful and honest with your significant other and your partner. Uh, for me and our relationship, we were running from each other. We weren't renewing each other. We were taking from each other so often. So I don't know how many people fall in this category and maybe feel the same way, but vulnerability comes at when you're completely honest and you're not running from anything, you can be truthful and honest with that other person. And by not wanting to change them, but living in true accordance, I think that that will open up the door for possibility in, uh, in growth in your marriage. So we hit rock bottom. That's just, that's just the bottom line. And so we were able to hold things together, go through therapy and actually start sharing these things with each other that were meaningful and truthful. And we just felt like this whole world lifted up and um, we were able to rebuild with each other through that aspect of truth. There's nothing that she doesn't know and, and same thing. And a lot of my friends that I speak to, they don't have that same connection. So, but because they're also running from things that, they're not happy about. Uh, yeah, and you know, one question that I didn't ask you during our uh, initial conversation, Philip, was the idea of leading from, from a place of wealth of leadership. What do you think it means to lead from a place of wealth of leadership? What does that mean to you? I think that's a, it's a mindset issue. I think that that's a mindset issue. Um, principle um leading leading with uh following your true your true north your compass anytime we look in the mirror and we in in our conscious is speaking us speaking to us to drop something um it's up to us to listen to that and if we don't we will fall into a cycle of not being able to uh properly live in the moment we're going to live in regret or we're going to live in the future of how we can do things better. But if we're honestly like operating out of 100% reality and truth from our internal state, we can then become a positive leader in our family. Yeah. And uh, Philip, what does gratitude mean to you? What does the concept of gratitude mean to you, my friend? Action. I think gratitude is action. It's showing what you're truly grateful for. You can. I, I think that it's good to say things and and write them down and be grateful for opportunities and be grateful for your life. And as an example, someone says they're they're. Oh, I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm happy to be alive today. That's great. I love that answer. And I've and I've talked with myself on that. But how are you going to show it? How are you backing that up with action? Are you waking up and are you feeding yourself high quality foods? Are you eating? Are you eating better? Are you are you taking down a pizza and feeling like crap and then not being able to fully be available and not serving your body with the right the right energies? So I think that it's action based and it's showing versus actually just thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, fellow, if I asked you to. Uh, produce a commercial or a campaign uh, uh, all about kindness, my friends, to sort, sort of peel our fractured society because I know that you're a big believer in, in 
and leading from a place of kindness. What do you think you would focus that campaign on? And what does kindness mean to you? The campaign that I would put together would be um, celebrating celebrating uh, differences. I think that, again, change through differences. And if we're able to come together from a point of acceptance, then we can actually under try to understand that other person and not be... Let me let me pause here. Yeah, go ahead. I think that if the campaign was I'm not looking I don't know how to put this together or phrase it, so I would need someone to help me with this. But yeah. not yes. looking to be right. Not looking to be right. Yeah, so let me help you with that. In terms of you, you know, I firmly believe that everything in life happens for a reason, right? And if you are leading from a place of abundance when it comes to kindness, I, you know, um, we've all heard the saying, if you teach a man how to uh, cook, he'll eat for a day, but if you uh, teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. So I, I guess I'm asking you in terms of kindness, what do you think it, it'll take for people to sort of break down their walls and, and begin to really respect people again and lead from a place of kindness. So I hope that gives you some clarity on that question. Yeah, that's really good. I, I like that. I think we could all do that through causing and voluntarily putting ourselves through adversity. I just think that we have too many things and options at our disposal. And so we're not in turn living in an, we are living in abundance, but not being grateful for that and all kind of like cycles together. So by removing aspects of being comfortable, we can build our character through adversity and then in turn be real with each other and be grateful for actually like being able to spend time with each other and cooking. Cause at the end of the day, if like you're getting, if say this right you get an ice cream today next week if you had an ice cream those next fo the following days till next week you wouldn't appreciate it so removing that and when you do end up getting that uh, ice cream you can actually enjoy it that much more and so i think that that all filters in as well uh, yeah and, and philip i'm curious to ask you how do you want to make the most positive change in the world from an individual perspective. What does that mean to you to make personal uh, positive uh, change in the world? For me, helping people self-actualize that we're the creators of our life because that's truly what we are. We have the pen, we're the authority figure and it's up to you to continue writing that story. What's happened to us in the past is the past. We can accept it, but we need to move on from it. And if I can give anybody a perspective shift to realize that you're the archetype of your life and you always have been. So circumstances do end up tackling us, but how do we respond from that and how do we move forward? So that's that's something that I've been able to help my clients with is just shifting that perspective. And I would love for more people to adopt that. Yeah, I, I, you know, Philip, I'm going to ask you about your fitness journey in just a second because I know uh, fitness is important to you. But I also want to know, why do you think in life it's important to develop a passion? Because, you know, in my view, developing a passion means that you're invested in sort of moving the needle of progress forward and you bring purpose to your life. So tell me about why it's important to develop uh, a passion in life and why fitness is one of your biggest passions in life as well. I think it's, I think it serves people on a very, very deep level. It's not superficial. It can be, and that's kind of the byproduct of working out, 
But again, elevating that internal state is so moving that I've experienced that now that I'm able to help other people experience it as well, it's second to none. So this is something fitness for me as a passion I would do without if I never earned a dollar from. I think that by providing somebody with self-love through that modality specifically is uh, a priceless endeavor. And so passion fuels our tank. And if we're not chasing the dollar and we find something that we wouldn't necessarily do for money, that we would be able to be a better service to society. And for me, I'm a servant. I want to serve as many people as I can. And for me, that passion I've seen what a difference it's made in my life, in my in, in my circle of friends and people and certain clients. So that's what I'm going to continue to push and help people with. Yeah, and, and Philip, I know that you're uh, one of the biggest things you help your clients do is sort of earn their positive mental attitude, my friend. So talk to me about mindset shifts and what it means to you to uh, develop a positive mental attitude. It's just, again, operation. How do you operate on your day to day? We have 60 to 70, 60 to 70,000 words or 60, 70,000 thoughts that go through our head a day. How many of them are negative? I know we've heard that so many times, but if we're actually, if we make and fulfill our word with ourselves, then we elevate as a byproduct of that as well. And we can help but be in a position of, of, uh, of, of love. It just, it, it, it's hand in hand. So internal, our internal state, most of us are, it is, is negative. And I can speak for myself. So like, as an example today, I woke up, I wasn't in the greatest mood. Um, but I knew that putting myself through this adversity and getting those endorphins going that I was going to be pushed forward and my internal state was going to be happy. And I was going to come home and fully be aligned with my family and be in body and in spirit. And so I knew that that was, it was bigger than just me. So I went through and that's, that's the process that I follow through with on a day to day to get me to that elevated, elevated internal state. Yeah. And, and Philip, I, I only have a few questions left for you. And the first is, I want to know what's your greatest hope in life for yourself personally and society. When you think of the word hope, how do you define it, my friend? Hope for me, hope is possibility. I think that hope could be a possibility of future change. And it's an opportunity to grasp and hold on to, to in turn get you through the next day. And if you're hopeful in something, you're more you're you're more inclined to to actually uh follow through with some of these like changes that might not be um comfortable for you and i and i and i'm coming from a place of uh again internal growth because that's kind of what i'm all about mm -hmm. so hope is an opportunity to see change and it's it's again a per, it's a perspective for me yeah and, and i'll combine uh, my last two questions you know, uh, you, you know, Philip, doing my research on you, buddy, I, I, I found out that you, you believe that in life we have two monsters that we uh, confront on a daily basis. And I, I know though that analogy all has to do about mindset and putting ourselves in a, a, a sort, sort of um, – mental state to win. So I'm wonder, wondering if you can define the two uh, monsters that we confront in life. And then finally, uh, Philip, when you look at your own personal and professional legacy, how do you want that to be defined? Well, those two, those two monsters, that is our inner critic and the inner advocate. And those energies will pull us at different times. I mean, just being out and about and looking at an opportunity, if it's beneficial, but you're, you've never actually experienced anything in that arena, your fear is going to take over. 
and fear will hinder us from taking action, taking the next step. But realizing that fear is just that, and it's not necessarily, it's not harmful. I think separating fear and danger is a very important aspect to look at because if we're able to separate those two and dive into that advocate, the one that's going to cheer us on, we can actually in turn make that shift and go in because we all have this. Every single one of us has this fear, doubt, insecurities, um, but also like positivity and um, leadership skills but we have to dive into it. And if we're, we don't like doing things that we're uncomfortable in that we've never done before. So my personal legacy and as, as someone that is making a footprint on this planet is just having conversations like you, my friend, having, having times of, of communion and church, as you will, like sharing this, this energy, this energy exchange with each other. I think we all learn from each other. And I think that we can all do better at, uh, getting together and, and serving each other. Uh, well, you know, uh, Philip, no matter how many degrees you have on a wall or how many years you went to school, you can always learn something for so, someone else, right? I learn every day. I mean, I learn from my two and a half year old son. So I'm very much that. Yeah, absolutely. And my friend, finally, tell me if people want to get connected with you, what's the best way they can do that? Everybody can find me on Highest Form Fitness. This is on Instagram. And I will be starting a TikTok very soon and also a YouTube channel. But right now, it's Instagram at Highest Form Fitness. Fantastic. Well, Philip, it's always great to see you. And it was uh, delightful to engage in conversation with you about fitness life and everything in between, my friend. You're doing a, a great uh, job in helping the rest of the world to level up in both their fitness journey and in life my friend uh, it was a privilege to be with you and i want to thank you for your time my friend privilege man privilege was mine thank you let's all level up together let's let's shift and change our perspective